And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Well, if you want to know more about two controversial Internet anti-piracy bills moving through Congress, you won't be able to consult Wikipedia on Wednesday. The online encyclopedia and sixth most visited site in the world will join websites like the content aggregator Reddit to go dark for 12 to 24 hours in opposition to the Stop Online Piracy, or SOPA, Act, and its companion bill, the Protect IP Act. Wikipedia co-founder Jimmy Wales announced the decision to bring down his website last night on Twitter, writing, quote, student warning, do your homework early, Wikipedia protesting bad law on Wednesday. The White House responded over the weekend to two petitions opposing the bills. The administration's chief technology officials wrote on White White House blog Saturday, uh, quote, we will not support legislation that reduces freedom of expression, increases cybersecurity risk, or undermines the dynamic, innovative global Internet. While the White House did not take a definite position on SOPA and the Protect IP Act, it has called for legislation to combat online piracy that has hurt the legislation's main backers, Hollywood movie studios and music publishers who want to stop the theft of their creative content. Now a vote on SOPA is on hold in the House. The Senate's still scheduled to vote on the piracy issue next Tuesday, a week from today. Well, to talk more about the Stop Online Piracy Act, or SOPA, and the Protect IP Act, we go to San Francisco to correct Corinne McSherry, who is the Intellectual Property Director at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Please explain both of these bills. It's very tough, I think, for most people to understand uh, the technical aspects of this legislation. Sure. Um, in a nutshell, what these bills propose are new powers for the government and also for private actors to create effectively blacklists of sites that allegedly are engaging in uh, some form of, of online infringement, and then force service providers to block access to those sites. And that's why we call these the, the censorship bills, because effectively what we would have is a situation where pri the government and private actors could censor the net. So U.S. citizens would basically get a different version of the Internet. Um, different from what you might get in, say, Italy or, or even China. So explain the difference between SOPA and the Protect IP Act. Well, currently they're quite, they're quite similar. The original, as drafted, SOPA was much broader than the Protect IP Act. And the uh, folks behind the bill realized that maybe it was a little bit too broad. So they, they um, tailored it down. So now they're, they're quite similar. Um, one of the differences is that SOPA is finally, after a great deal of activism, more or less on hold for now. But um, Senator Reid is saying that he's going to push forward the Protect IP Act, despite all of the opposition. And explain who is behind these two acts. Well, that's not a great mystery. Um, both of these acts are, are clearly being pushed hard by the big media industries who seem to think that online piracy is, is why they're, they're having trouble, um, and actually who insist that they're having uh, all kinds of trouble and they're, they're failing immediately. If something isn't hap—if legislation isn't passed immediately, they're going to all go under, which is not true. In fact, the motion picture industry has been posting record profits for five years straight. In a December hearing of the House Judiciary Committee, uh, Congress member Jason Chaffetz, a Republican from Utah, talked about the lack of expert consultation in drafting SOPA. I was trying to think of a way to try to describe my concerns with this bill, but basically, we're going to create, we're going to do surgery on the internet, and we haven't had a doctor in the room tell us how we're going to change these organs. We're basically going to reconfigure the internet and how it's going to work without bringing in the nerds without bringing in the doctors. And again, I worry that we did not take the time to have a hearing to truly understand what it is we're doing. And to my colleagues, I would say, if you don't know what DNSSEC is, you don't know what you're doing. And so my concern is that there is a problem, but this is not necessarily the right remedy. That was Utah Congressmember Chaffetz. Corinne McSherry, your response. 
I think he's absolutely right. SOPA in particular was negotiated without any consultation with the technology sector. They were specifically excluded. And one of the things I think is really exciting, though, is that, you know, no one asked the Internet. Well, the Internet is speaking now, and so we're seeing all kinds of opposition all over the web, and there's going to be a day of action tomorrow. Uh, people are really rising up and saying, don't interfere with basic Internet infrastructure. We won't stand for it. What do you make of President Obama's position on the bill, Corinne? Well, it's, it was heartening to see the White House statement and see the White House sort of stand with the Internet and uh, stand with its own commitments against censorship and against online censorship in particular. Uh, up until recently, we've been very concerned that there seemed to be a contradiction. On the one hand, you had Hillary Clinton uh, criticizing foreign governments for, for online censorship and for censoring uh, web results and so on. Uh, but at the same time, you had these bills rocketing through Congress that would propose very similar things. So it was good to see the White House stand uh, against that and criticize these bills. On the other hand, I am concerned that the White House seems to think that some kind of legislation needs to be passed this year. And I actually don't think the case has been made for that. Um, talk about the whole issue of um, the protection of artists, for example, the music industry and their concerns. Well, look, there's no question that there's plenty of infringement online. That's been true for a long time now. The question is how you're going to answer it. And the best way to respond, it's very clear at this point, the best way to respond to online infringement is to give people a better alternative. And when that happens, people go to that. So that's the best way to do it. It's not to pretend that the Pirate Bay doesn't exist. It's to give people an alternative uh, to the Pirate Bay. And one of the things that we've seen is that actually independent artists are taking advantage of new technologies to reach, the audi reach new audiences. Music fans have more access to more music than they ever had before in different kinds of music. And that's what happens when you take advantage of new technologies as opposed to running away from them. Let me read you a tweet uh, that Mur Murdoch sent out this weekend. So Obama has thrown in his lot with Silicon Valley paymasters who threaten all software creators with piracy, plain thievery. Well, you know, <laughs> I think it's ironic to, to talk about paymasters, given the amount of money that Hollywood has been spending in Congress to try to ram these bills through. I think it is true that the, the Obama administration has somewhat stood with Silicon Valley here, but I think Silicon Valley knows how to protect itself against so-called software piracy um, better than Rupert, Rupert Murdoch will. Finally, the votes, where they stand this week. Well, what we're seeing now is um, Harry Reid, Senator Reid, is insisting that he's going to go forward with a vote next Tuesday on uh, the Protect IP Act. Uh, we'll see what happens over the course of the week. Things have changed a lot. And after the day of action tomorrow, a lot of us are hopeful that Senator Reid will think better of push, trying to push this bill through. Um, given the level of opposition, it's really just a bad idea, particularly when you think about what they're doing here. This is basic Internet infrastructure that they're messing with. And I think that Representative Chaffetz had it exactly right. It's foolish to go in and, and interfere with Internet infrastructure when you don't know what you're doing. And the uh, uh, overall SOAP and PEEPO, how they've been separated? Well, um, SOPA seems to be on hold for now. Um, if PIPA is rammed through, it may be that in the House of Representatives they will try to revive SOPA and sort of bring the two bills in line. I certainly hope not, because that would be very, very dangerous for, for human rights, for Internet security, um, and send an extremely negative signal around the world that the United States government does, in fact, support censorship, as long as you say that you're uh, doing it in the name of intellectual property enforcement. Uh, Corinne McSherry, I want to thank you for being with us, Intellectual Property Director at the Electronic Frontier.